Good morning. Welcome to worship on this Reformation Sunday and also our Confirmation Sunday, which will be at the 1030 service. Uh, but welcome. We kind of celebrate the birthday of the church on Reformation Sunday. So a few announcements for this week. Um, just a reminder, Wednesday night suppers are back. And this week we're having grilled pork chops and potatoes. Uh, yeah, I know it sounds delicious. Uh, next Sunday is All Saints Sunday. Um, on both services, we will be remembering the saints from our saviors who have died since last All Saints Sunday. You can see the grab and go for a, for a bunch of other announcements, but I really want to highlight Theology on Tap is on Thursday, November 11th from 6.30 to 8 out at Shells. We're so excited to start this. Um, it will really just be a casual time to talk about faith, questions we might have, dig in a little bit, and then to share a beverage together and just have some time of fellowship. In our prayers today, we continue to pray for those on our prayer list. We pray, too, for the family of Dee Schultz. Dee's funeral was here on Friday, so uh, we pray for her husband, Wayne, and her children and grandchildren. The flowers you see back here are from her funeral. We also pray for Judy Gansky and her family as they grieve the death of her brother. Those are the announcements I have, and so with that, we will begin with our gathering hymn. Please stand as you are able for a mighty fortress. We continue with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, 
Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. We take a moment for reflection. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We Let us pray together. Blessed God, you have called these baptized young adults to affirm their faith in you. Give them joy in their confirmation, peace in their hearts, and courage as they live their lives for you. Send them and all of us into the world to serve you in everything we do for the glory of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The psalm today is Psalm 46. We will read the psalm responsibly. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, he will not fear, though the earth be moved and though the mountains shake in the depths of the sea, though its waters rage and foam and though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be shaken. God shall help it at the break of day. The nations rage, the kingdoms shake. God speaks, and the earth melts away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now, regard the works of God. What desolations God has brought upon the earth. Behold the one who makes war to cease in all the world, who breaks the bow, who shatters a spear and burns the shields with fire. Be still then, I know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. 
Please stand as you are able for the singing of the gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to John, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Judeans who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham, and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, You will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. This morning for our children's sermon, I have a special guest. It's this guy. Do you want any of you know who this is? You probably can't tell. It's a little too far. Can we go to the next slide? It's this guy down at the bottom. Uh, I'm a very cool person, and this is my Playmobil Martin Luther. I feel like all of you are judging me right now. You shouldn't be judging me. This is super cool, you guys. I love this because this is Martin Luther, and he looks all fun and cozy, even though the real Martin Luther was kind of mean and a little bit scary looking. You can actually see he's one of the guys up there, the scarier looking one. He's kind of an intense guy, but in his hand, he has a quill for writing, and he has a Bible. That's one of the things we celebrate on Reformation Sunday. Martin Luther changed how we see the Bible because he put the Bible into people's hands. Before this time, people couldn't read the Bible themselves. But Luther had heard these words about the truth setting us free knowing that God's truth sets us free to serve in God's kingdom. So, on this Reformation Sunday, and yes, Halloween as well, we remember Martin Luther and the work that he did so that we could know that we are beloved children of God and that we can go and share that with the world. So let's say a word of prayer. Repeat after me. Holy God, thank you for your word. Thank you for your truth. Set us free to love all people. And all God's children said, Amen. Thanks. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I'm excited because this is Reformation Sunday, and it's not often that we get a Reformation Sunday on Reformation Day on October 31st, but also we get to do our confirmation service at our 1030 service. I'm really excited about that because these kids have been prepping for this for a long time. They've put in a lot of work, and they've really thought through a lot of big questions. I like to think that they're doing their own reformation. Martin Luther changed the church, because in his life he heard only about a God that was angry and vengeful. But then he started reading Scripture, and he heard about a God who loved him more than he could possibly know. 
a God who gives him grace, even though he's imperfect, even though he falls short, that God still loves him. And over the course of confirmation, these kids have learned the same thing. Through Sunday school, they learned the basic stories of the Bible. They learned kind of those core beliefs. They learned about what the Bible says. And in confirmation, they learned how to apply it to their life, how to make it meaningful on any normal day. And they're doing a great job. So I wanted to share with you uh, some pieces from their faith statements, a way that you can hear about the wisdom that these kids already have and the faith that continues to grow in them. So we have six questions. And the first one, it seems like a pretty simple one. It seems pretty straightforward. How does Jesus, or how does your faith in Jesus influence your life? And the correct answer is, Jesus tells me how to be good. But that's not what we look for in these faith statements. What we're looking for is these kids thinking about what it means to be a Christian on a daily basis. And they really did a great job. Sophia Cook said, My faith in Jesus influences my life because it helps me when making decisions. It also influences my life through rough times. She knows that she can trust in God when times are good, when times are bad, when she needs help. Mallory Anderson wrote about a turning point in her faith, about how she uh, interacts with her faith on a daily basis. A turning point I would list in my faith and my relationship with God would be when I first started going to Wednesday Wild. Every Wednesday, I was able to come to church after school and continue my faith with my friends. Mallory was in our Wednesday after school choir program, and she learned about her faith there. She grew in her faith with her friends. She sang beautiful music. That's incredible. She had so many people influencing her faith. And that leads into our second question. Who has influenced your faith? Ethan Lieb wrote, The first people to come to mind that influence my faith are my parents. At first, when I was a child, they just dragged me to church. But when I got old enough, I felt like they were more and more letting me decide if it was really something I wanted. And I liked that a lot, because them letting me decide if I wanted to follow my faith definitely changed my faith for the better. He talks about growing up and growing into his faith, and his faith continues to grow in that same way. Courtney Bray talks about her grandmother. She writes, My grandma is someone who influenced my faith. Going to church every Sunday when we would stay with her on the weekends, reading a Bible story before bed every time they read Baby Moses, and praying with her. That is what we're looking for. Those inspiring people in our lives who can change our faith. And Davney Dreckman went uh, a little more general. She, she, uh, she writes, I liked Sunday school and confirmation. I think she just put in that she liked confirmation because she had her interview with me. So she was worried I was going to like fail her. Whatever. But none of that came close to VBS. To this day, Vacation Bible School is still something I look forward to every summer. The amount of kids that leave at the end of the day with a big smile on their face just warms my heart. She's not there to learn. She's at VBS as a guide. But those kids are inspiring her, and she is without a doubt inspiring those kids. She's really embodying what the church should look like where we help each other grow, where we guide each other, no matter what age. 
Then we got into our third question. What is your favorite Bible story and why? What do you learn from God from this story? And we got a lot of wonderful answers. I heard about uh, Christmas, uh, the Christmas story. I heard about uh, Noah's Ark. I heard about uh, Jonah and the whale. But I wanted to lift up Logan Lee. He was talking about the story of Samson. It's not one of my favorites. It's, you know, it's a story I know. But I've never put too much thought into it. But Logan, in his paper, wrote, The story of Samson shows that man alone is nothing compared to man with God. I wish I could have written something like that when I was a 10th grader. That is the core of faith. That is what we pray for in these confirmands, that they would hear these stories and learn from them, applying them to their life. And that takes us into our fourth question. What does confirmation mean to you? Brooke Gromance wrote, It's important to get confirmed because you spend your whole childhood learning about God's Word, and now you're ready to worship Him for the rest of your life. Again, it's that growth mindset realizing that there is so much more to learn, that faith continues, that in Sunday school, as you're learning, you're growing in your faith, and at confirmation, you're learning and growing in your faith, and on Sunday mornings, you're learning and you're growing in your faith, and it gets to be this lifelong learning about who God is and whose we are. So now that we're getting towards the end, we get into some of the bigger questions. On Confirmation Sunday, you will receive a blessing. What does this blessing mean to you? And Ty Frederick writes, The blessing to me means that we are asking God to be with us through the good and the bad and to help us make good decisions in life. I feel like this is important because I will definitely need God's help to live a good life as a Christian. I just, I love that. He's engaging with this idea that we aren't perfect and that we have so much further to go, but that with God's help, it's all going to be possible. And Briar Lang wrote about a specific blessing. He writes about the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit mean to show wisdom, understanding, counsel, strength, knowledge, and hope. That sounds like a pretty good blessing, like a blessing that I could use each and every day of my life. And now we get to our final question. And I hope that you hear this question and you take it home with you. You think about what this means. If I had to tell someone why I am a Christian, I would say, what? I want you to think about that. Imagine someone asks you why you're a Christian. I know the church answer. I know the right answer. But what would I say? Well, Parker Com says, if I had to tell someone why I'm a Christian, I would say it's not about identifying what religion you are, but more about your beliefs and how you want to let God into your life. He sees that this is so much more than something that happens on a Sunday morning. It's something that happens throughout our whole life. And Peyton Queno wrote, I'm a Christian because I try my best to live God's word and values. Lastly, I'm a Christian because God is my God, and he and I share a special relationship in which I hope to continue to grow after I am confirmed. I wish I had that same faith in this time, or at that point in my life. I wish I had their words. 
And I hope that we can hear these words not as those of 10th graders, but words as siblings in Christ. As they're confirmed, they become full-fledged members of our church. They get to vote in our annual meeting, which, woo, super exciting, right? That's not a big deal. The bigger deal is they get to be recognized for the work that they've done. They get to affirm the promises that their parents made for them at baptism. And they get to inspire us in how we live our lives. They're not perfect, but neither are we. We are all still growing in our faith. We're all still working to learn where God is in our lives. So I hope that over the next few weeks, you find some of these confirmands and pick their brains about their faith. Learn about what they have to teach you. Hear their words and be inspired. Let's pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for your word, for your truth that sets us free. Sets us free from the power of sin and death and sets us free to live a life in service to you. We ask a prayer of blessing upon our confirmands and upon us as we continue to grow in your love and life. Help us to be a beacon for your joy and your good news in this world. Send us out to be your hands and feet. All this we pray in the name of Jesus, our Savior, Messiah, Redeemer, and Friend. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able and will join in singing our hymn of the day, Here I Am, Lord.
with the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from sin and death and nourished by the word of truth, we join in prayer for all of God's creation. Loving God, we pray for all who long for a word of truth and for the grace that flows from the cross. Inspire congregations to freely and boldly proclaim your love for all people with persistence and hope. Bless those who seek to grow in faith and love of you. Guide teaching and learning in confirmation, small groups, linked youth groups, and Bible studies. As our 10th graders affirm their faith in you, today we give thanks for all who have taught and modeled faith for them. Continue to guide them in their lives. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, raise up governments to act with justice and peace. Pour wisdom and understanding upon all who govern, so that communities of justice and peace may thrive. Bless citizens with wisdom and discernment as they choose leaders, and inspire leaders to always seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Compassionate God, we pray for those who long for healing in mind, body, or spirit, especially Merle, Audrey, Russ, Gail, Dixie, Dave, Marilyn, Sharon, Larry, Joyce, Anne, Kane, Dave, Tom, Pam, Sharon, Marge, Lane, Khan, Linda, Michelle, Tom, Paul, Richard, and those we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Strengthen hospitals, clinics, counseling centers, nursing homes, and recovery centers to be holy spaces of renewal that all might live the abundant life you intend. Comfort all who grieve, especially the family of D. Schultz and Judy's family as they grieve the death of her brother. Lord, in your mercy. Faithful reformer, you make all things new. Reform your church so that our life together bears witness to your unmerited love for all. Free us from sin and write the law of love on our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Confident that you hear us, O God, we boldly place our prayers into your hands through Jesus Christ, our truth and life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Let us share a word of peace with one another. Please be seated as we take the offering.
Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We remember on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, giving it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Christ took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. This morning, communion will be served in two stations. Our ushers will release you forward row by row. Come, ooh, you'll come forward uh, to receive a piece of bread or a gluten-free wafer upon request. Once you've eaten that, you'll receive a glass of wine or of grape juice. If you'd prefer grape juice, please put up your index finger so our deacon can know that's your choice. And once you've finished with that, our acolytes have baskets where you can place those empty cups. This is the meal that strengthens us for the week to come. This is the meal that helps us grow in the joy of the Lord, continuing to grow in our faith, continuing to spread the good news of Jesus. Come, all are welcome.
please rise. Holy God has fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. May it strengthen us for all of our days to come and keep us growing in the joy of the Lord. Amen. And now receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now we'll join in our sending hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.